Hello, I hope this video finds you well. This is the first in a set of videos where we are going to make a variety of simple programs that are essentially the hello world of GUI stuff, the moving ball. Um, in this video, what I'm going to do is set up a simple template that we will use whenever we want to kind of learn a new concept that looks at this. This is a great way to learn the basics of TK Inter um, and to basic algorithm development and also where math plays a big part in programming. With that said, um, this is not what our template is going to look like. What our template will look like well, is this. Python 3 ball.py. This is all our template is going to look like. It's going to have a ball, it's going to move across the screen, and I have a border. I'm going to use this template um, to do a variety of different things, and we'll do those in some later videos. And with that, Let's dive in. Now, before I actually dive in, let me say one more thing. I'm going to be using um, uh, Python 3. So it, it's really similar in Python 2, but the import statement for TK enter is a little bit different. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import TK enter. So remember, an import statement is kind of like a, t a way of getting a toolbox. Um, I always use the analogy, you know, you're a really good handyman and you have a thousand toolboxes. Someone calls you up and says, I need some help. You're not going to bring all 1,000 toolboxes. You're going to bring a couple of your core toolboxes and then, and then show up to help. Now, if someone calls you up and says, I need help with plumbing, you're going to bring your specialized plumbing toolbox. So this statement here imports that specialized, now it does, Imp imports that specialized toolbox for using the TK Inter module, which has a whole bunch of really useful tools. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import the random rand int. So these are just two tools that I need. They don't come standard with Python, you know, you run it. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to make a root, and that's going to be called TK. It's going to be TK. So what this does is this line root.main loop. These two lines in TK enter are what sets up your screen. So this line constructs your root window. And what I mean by that is think of that as your window that has your maximize, minimize button, um, and resize button. And this enters a game loop, for lack of a better word. So essentially what this does is this says, okay, now I want you to enter a loop, and I want you to continually run forever, and then wait for something to happen. And waiting for something to happen is where we get into the fun area of event-driven programming. So what we can eventually do is say, okay, when a, when a button is clicked or a keyboard is pressed or you move the mouse, do this, and that changes the screen. Now, I always like to do this just so people can see this. Um, I'm going to print and program there. So now if I pull this up and I run this, so I say Python 3 moving ball template. Pi, um, and we wait. Why aren't you coming up? Oh, I didn't save it. <laughs> there we go. There's my window. Here's my window. Here it is. And notice down here, it hasn't said end program. And that's because it's sitting right here. It's just in that game loop waiting for something to happen. All right. So what do we want to do next? The next thing is I want to give this window a name. So I'm going to say root.title. And I'm going to call title this ball template. Okay. Um, and the next thing I want to do is I want to set root dot resizable. And I'm going to set that to false, false. So just to kind of a little understanding here, these are called instance methods. So the instance that is acting on is the root variable. So the root variable is the window we see. And we're saying, take that root window, set the title to balls, ball template. Take that root window, set resizable to false, false. This means you cannot make it bigger horizontally or vertically. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add a canvas. So the canvas object or the canvas widget is what actually allows me to draw things on the screen. So I'm going to say canvas equals canvas bracket root. And the first parameter is always the root window that you want to put that widget in. So I want to put my canvas object in the root. And I can have some named parameters here. Width is 300. Height is equal to 300. And then I'm going to say canvas.pack. 
And what this does is this packs the canvas into the root title. So if I save this and I run this, the only difference you're going to notice now, if I spoke canvas correctly, <laughs> the only difference you're going to notice now is that we have a title at the top and it's a little bigger, but it's still white. There's nothing there. And the reason why there's nothing there is because the canvas now is, think of it like, an artist canvas. We can paint on this, we can do all sorts of fun things to this. All right, and end program. So now what I want to do is I want to draw something on this canvas. And to do that I use I use various methods. Um, so if I do this, I say canvas, because remember um, we've named our canvas on our screen canvas, so I'm going to take the canvas object and I'm going to say create oval. And there's a whole bunch of these functions. And the functions work like this. It has four parameters that give um, position information and they always have to be first. And then you can add a whole bunch of named parameters. And so you see that up here. So in this case we have one parameter where order matters. It has to be the root, so where are we putting this widget. And then these are called name parameters because it doesn't matter the order as long as they have a name with them. So when I want to draw an, o an oval, what I do is I give the top left x and y, so I'm going to say 10, 10, and then I give the bottom left x and y, 20, 20, and that draws a box. And then what it will do is draw a circle inside of that box. And I'm going to use this fill parameter, and I'm going to set it to red. So when I save this now, and I run this, I get this screen, and I have this nice ball here that's red. I think it's a really great thing now to pause this video and play around moving this ball around to familiarize yourself with these different parameters. Okay, the next thing I want is I want to put something on the canvas and I want to put canvas.createRectangle. And again, it's the same idea. It takes four parameters that indicate the top left corner and the bottom right corner. So x1, y1 and x2, y2. And it will draw a rectangle where the top left corner is at 3, 3, and the bottom left, bottom right corner is 300, 300. So if I save this and run this, oh, I forgot the L. <laughs> so I save this and I run this. So now I have this ball in this nice rectangle. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this video you have a little bit of experience, but maybe you don't and you're kind of just following along, which is great. This is really important. When you're working with graphics in any system, the top left-hand corner is 0, 0. This is positive x direction. This is positive y direction. So I'll say that again. 0, 0 is in the top left corner, and then it moves positive x, positive y. So like I said, when I'm using this parameter, you see how it's 3, 3. What that means is the top left corner of this rectangle is at 3, 3, and the bottom right corner is at 300, 300. All right, so now I want this ball to move. And to do this, I have to set up a thread that's being called after, after it on a certain timed interval. And this is a, a quite a complicated idea. So I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible, but this is what has to happen. So I have this main loop that's taken over the processor. Essentially nothing else can run. And we, we've kind of shown that to ourselves because if I pull this up, you know, we have that, we have that print command and program, and it doesn't show up until I kill that because it's sitting here. So what I can do is I can use this after function, and I'm going to say root after, and I'm going to say after I don't know, 50 milliseconds, so the first parameter is milliseconds, I want you to invoke the function move ball. Now you might be saying to yourself, you don't have a function yet called move ball, and that's correct. So we have to write it. And so what I do is I come up here, and I'm going to make a def called move ball. And all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to print movie. So if we save this, we come over here, and we run this, Oh, I forgot my colon at the end there. Save this. And we run this. See down here? Oh, I know what I forgot. Sorry. 
So what happened right now is it moved the ball after 50 milliseconds. Now, I want this function to be called every 50 milliseconds. So what I can do now is I can come to the bottom of this function, and I'm going to write the same thing, root dot after 50 comma move ball. And what that does now is that will call this function every 50 milliseconds. And there it is, moving, 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 moving. And so what happens is that the function loads, or the program loads, builds your widget. This is where you are. This is you building your screen. And now this is kind of running things. So it says, okay, after the root's been, been the main loop has been run, in fact, 50 milliseconds after it's been run, I want you to call this move ball function. Now I want you to start the main loop. And so, and then it waits 50 milliseconds, and then it runs this, and then it gets to the bottom, waits 50 milliseconds, calls it again, calls it again, and that's how we get this. So what we want to do now is we want to do something with our ball. And what that is, is we want to move it. So to do that, I did not want to close that at all. This is what I want to close. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to access this oval I've drawn, because that is the ball. So this here, this is the ball. And to do this, I'm going to give this a variable name, and I'm going to call it ball. So this is called ball, and now up here, I can actually access the ball. And how do I do that? Well, I take the canvas, and I invoke what's called the move function. And the move function takes three parameters. It takes something that you've drawn on the screen. And we know that we've created an oval, and that created oval is called ball, so I'll put ball there. And then it takes a delta x, that is a change in x, and a delta y, a change in y. And for now, I'm just going to put 1, 1. And watch what happens. And there's that ball moving. So now what's happening is every time this function is called, I'm going to move the ball, which is tied to that oval, 1, positive x and one positive y and that's why it moves down and that is our template we are good to go and start doing all sorts of fun things with this now I am going to do this again but I'm going to do this using a class structure so if you're if you understand object-oriented design and you you have a little familiarity with that or you're learning that I'm going to recommend you set this up using a class structure um, I don't do that. I didn't do it first with a class structure because if you're new to programming, it just adds a whole other layer of complexity to this. But it is a better way to set this up. So, like I said, this is the first of a number of videos. And if there's something you'd like to see me do with the ball, if you'd like to see it bounce off the walls or put an obstacle, let me know. And then I will use this template and build some further videos from it. Hope that helped. Have a wonderful day.